What's going on guys? Today we got uh, some more big boxes for the Civic, so just getting more parts. I'm going to show you guys how to do a clutch and flywheel install on my 99 Civic with a B16 swap. So, let's jump right into it. Here we go. My first time seeing it. That's even better. So I wish I could have done an unboxing on the clutch kit, however, when I got that a month ago, I was in a bit of a hurry, so you guys don't get that. Instead, you get a flywheel. Also, this is going to be for the B-Series, B16, 18, B20, part number YMFW-B, Yonaka, Street Imports. Thank you, guys. Like I said, I did put the Stage 3 Yonaka clutch kit in about a couple months ago uh, when I did the B16 swap. Didn't really film the process, and I should have done a flywheel at the time, but I didn't. So here we are. We're redoing all our progress. You are going to need brake clean. Brake clean and rags. It comes oiled so it doesn't rust, but when you put it into the car, you need to make sure you get all of that oil off. So if you open it up and you see that, be prepared, your hand's going to get oily. And that is normal, so expect it. Now, this weighs about 8 pounds lighter, I think, than factory. And that's where you're going to have all these holes drilled in it. These are going to be machined in holes to uh, keep it lightweight. But they do also balance them. Another good thing as well is this is SFI certified. So this is going to be uh, legal for all your turbo uses and it'll handle whatever you throw at it. So I'll show you guys the differences between the uh, new Stage 3 Racing Clutch and the lightweight flywheel compared to the Factory B-Series Clutch and flywheel. Huge difference, but I'll show you guys the next step, all the tools and things you're going to need. So let's go ahead and start uh, lifting our vehicle up, start getting our parts together and start ripping things apart. To do this clutch, you're going to need a whole variety of tools. You're going to want some safety glasses and gloves. You're going to want some thick gloves. I just have welding gloves, but gloves are gloves. This is going to be so you don't smash your knuckles while hammering out the pin for your shifter linkage. First off, you're going to need a jack and jack stands. You're going to need a drain pan to drain your transmission oil. Then you're going to need a nice uh, socket set. You're going to need uh, pretty much everything from 10 to 19 millimeters. Some extensions will help as well. For certain jobs, you're going to want the hammer, especially for that shift linkage pin. As well as your axle nuts, you're going to need to use a punch. Uh, you're going to want some vice grips. And I just used a bolt this for the shift linkage pin. You guys will see that in a bit. Some wrenches. Ratcheting wrenches are really helpful for the 12 and 17 mil specifically. Uh, then you're going to need some pry bars, breaker bars, and torque wrenches for your wheels, flywheel, clutch kit. Brake clean and rags and or paper towel. That's going to be to clean off your surfaces. And some WD-40 will really help with some of these uh, rusty bolts up in Canada. Uh, some adjustable wrench or pliers. That's going to be for some brake caliper uh, slide pins, just so those aren't spinning. Side cutters and a small screwdriver to get the cotter pins out. And then some screwdrivers to get the pin off the shift linkage, as well as stopping the flywheel as you're trying to undo that. Uh, electric impact, air impact. That will help out a lot with some motor mount bolts or the axle nuts, things like that. Some specialty tools you may need. Uh, first off, you're going to need some 12-point sockets. You're going to need a 17 mil and a 10 mil. That's going to be for your flywheel and your clutch kit. Those are the two most important ones. For the flywheel bolts, you're going to need some blue Loctite. To get the axle nuts off, you're going to need a 34 or 35 mil socket or an inch and a quarter. Uh, you're going to need some high temperature uh, grease and then a pickle fork. This is a hard maybe. If you use this, you're going to have to replace some ball joints. But sometimes you do not have an option. So these are the tools you need to do a clutch job. Pretty straightforward, so let's get going. All right, so the first few steps here for doing the clutch on this car. You're going to want to take off the negative terminal first and your positive. Yank your intake out of the way. And you're going to want to undo your starter wire here. And pull your starter out. And you have two starter bolts, they're going to be 14 mil. It's going to be one at the top here and then one underneath. It's going to be kind of hard to find. Now you should have two connections on your manual transmission. You're going to have a speed sensor at the back. And then you should have one at the front here for your reverse lights. So how we're going to do it is we're going to undo the mounts on the transmission and the T-bracket. Unbolt the trans, put a jack under the engine. Then we can just slide the trans off, down, and access the flywheel from the back here. So that's the game plan. So our next step is going to be taking this sleeve cylinder off. You're going to have two bolts here. They're both going to be 12 mils. We're not going to remove the uh, clutch line here. 
So we're going to crack these two bolts loose, pull them out, lift this up, and we're going to swing it out of the way near the back somewhere. And uh, that way we're going to prevent it from being damaged. We're not going to have to bleed the system after, so it's going to be nice and easy. So our next step is going to be to lift the car. Just make sure you uh, chalk the rear wheels and use your e-brake. You're going to be taking off this passenger side torsion mount. The nut on the end is going to be a 19 mil. And then we're going to have three 17 mil bolts here. Now with how tight it is to the rad hose, I would recommend a ratcheting wrench. So we take those three out and this mount will slip right on out. So we've got most of everything uh, unhooked from the top of the transmission now. We're going to go ahead and try and keep the T-bracket bolted to the engine, just so we have something a little more rigid holding it up. We are going to have to take off two bolts near the bottom though. I'll show you guys some underneath. Our next step is going to be the shift linkage. With the shift linkage comes the first very annoying process. So here we are underneath the car. We're going to be going after our shift linkage next, as well as our T-bracket. Now this one here is going to be a 12 mil. Make sure you take both of those off. Give yourself a pry bar or wrench. And she should pop right off. And then the fun part. Now you should have this rubber boot on. And then there's going to be a clip on the other side of it. I'm going to show you here. So just a little snap ring. Watch your eyes when you do this. Because it likes to pop out. Then we have the fabled pin. There's many ways to do this. What I'm going to do, hit it hard and hit it a lot of times. So for this, you're going to want gloves. Definitely some thick gloves. I'd recommend some vice grips. And you can use a punch or a bolt. You want to make sure that the bolt is the same diameter as the hole, so it's going to be a nice snug fit up there. You're going to want something that's flat and not tapered. There is a seam on this, and if you are hammering it with a tapered bit, you're going to be spreading that pin in there, and it's not going to want to come out. Hold it up nice and flush, make sure you have gloves, especially on the hand holding the vice grips, and then you're going to want to hit it with a hammer. This really doesn't take too long if you do it this way. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. Pretty straightforward. Gloves will save your life. And make sure you don't have it pinched somewhere between your transmission. Because if you miss with a hammer, it's a good way to break a knuckle. So just be smart where you're holding your uh, vice grips. And we can go ahead and wiggle our shift linkage right off. And we're pretty much good to go. I'm going to finish taking off the 19 mil off the T-bracket. On the rear of your axle here, you're going to have three 14 millimeter bolts. And we can unbolt those now. And watch out, this will swing down. Watch where your fingers are, it's not heavy, it's not gonna fall out, but it will flop down. So, uh, three 14 mils here, and we're pretty much done underneath. Next, we gotta start on a wheel well. I'll show you the passenger side. We gotta do a whole lot of disassembling. We're gonna drain the transmission, and then we can start unbolting it. It's also not a bad idea to get in the habit that once you get a part removed, you put the bolts that uh, held it in back where they came from. That way it's uh, less things to keep track of. That'll help keep everything where it should be, make sure they go back where they came from. All right, so not a bad time to start draining your transmission. It's just gonna be using a 3 8 ratchet. Once we have that draining, we can move on to the axle nut. We've taken the wheel off. Those are gonna be 19 mils for the lug nuts. The axle nut should have a little divot here on the spindle, and it should be hammered in like this. Usually that's lined up with the hole, but I've already cracked it loose. That's where an electric impact comes in handy or a breaker bar, and you're probably gonna need a snipe or a pipe or something. That's an inch and a quarter socket. I believe that is a 34 or 35 mil. Can try getting someone to hold the brakes. Uh, this usually will fight you quite a bit. Sometimes you'll have to pop the center cap out of your wheel, bolt your wheel back on, drop it down, stick this through the rim, and then crack it loose that way. Gonna go ahead and buzz that off now, and just give it a good pop. You wanna make sure that this is moving freely before you go any further. Then we're going to have some hold down bolts here. This is going to be for your ABS line and your brake line. And these are going to be 10 mils. That way we'll be able to swing these two off to the sides. And then we can start taking off the caliper here, which is going to be a 12 mil. All right, guys, so we got our calipers off. Again, we're going to be putting the bolts back where we got them from so we don't lose them. On the rear, we're going to have two 17 mil bolts here. When you are taking this off, you want to be careful about the brake line and your ABS line. And you do not want to hang it off your rubber brake line here, so you can get a bungee cord and go through one of these caliper bolts to your frame. Rip the brakes off, and then we get to start doing ball joints. Now we have a few options here. Uh, you can either undo the upper ball joint or the lower one for the spindle or knuckle. 
I prefer using the lower ball joint and popping the lower control arm down. And then I find it helpful to do the tie rod as well. And then we have to undo this bolt here for the lower strut mount. Now the strut mount is a 17 mil. The upper ball joint is a 17. The tie rod is factory 17, but you can get a 19 as well if it's aftermarket, as well as the lower ball joint. I believe is a 17, but aftermarket you can get 19. So next we're gonna be doing the ball joints and I'll show you on this tie rod here. There's a few ways you can go at popping these out. The proper and the best way is to hit it on the side of the knuckle. So for example, tie rod, you're gonna to wanna to hit it here. Lower ball joint, you're gonna to wanna to hit it here on the side of the control arm. That's gonna be the proper way to pop out the ball joint. And this is where you can hit it the hardest. We've removed this lower 17 mil bolt here for the shock. And then as I was hammering out the tie rod, my lower ball joint popped out as well, so nice and easy for me. Lift up the spindle, pull it out, push your axle through. You can dangle your spindle off to the side. At this point, you can pop out your axle shaft. So next we're going to be popping our axle out. Get yourself a pry bar. You're going to want to wedge it between the transmission here and your axle. Right in that opening. And a lot of these will really fight you, so you might have to give it a really good hit. Then you're able to just slide your axle right on out. So I'm going to hop over there. I'm going to start taking off the driver's side. All right, so we got the axles out on both sides. So we're going to go ahead and we're starting to remove these bell housing bolts pulling the trans on. It's going to be one right here. And one on the opposite side here. This is going to be right above the exhaust between the transmission and the oil pan. These are going to be 17 mil. Once we get those bottom ones out, we're going to start getting these top ones. It's going to be one there. Two, and then three where the slave cylinder was. We're going to go ahead and put a jack under it now. And then we can go ahead and start taking off this uh, transmission mount here. So we got our three short bolts out of the uh, mount to the chassis. We're going to undo it now from the transmission. These are all 17s. Good time to point out we do have the jack supporting the transmission on the flat part here. All right, so all that's holding it up now are going to be these three bolts here. The ones I just showed a second ago. I'm going to start taking these off. Now, a lot of times the transmission is seized to the engine, but we still want to make sure that we're watching out our fingers here for these pinch points. So at this point, we do have a free hanging transmission. We have the jack supporting it. This is where having a buddy would come in handy, but uh, you can do it alone. I've done this a few times, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to crawl under and pull it off the engine myself. This isn't super heavy, especially when it's drained of fluid, but uh, it is good. Good to be safe, so using the jack, how light this is and the flat piece on the bottom of the jack, it's not too hard, so we're just going to slip her off, drop her down, should be good to go. So this is our stage three clutch. We're gonna go ahead and pull this off now. Factory bolts are all 12 point metric. This is a 10 mil for the clutch. So you can see that's our old flywheel. That's factory and that was a machine. And then this is gonna be our clutch. Still drain breaking. Flywheel, 17 mil, 12 point. These ones are very shallow. So you have to make sure you have this square so you do not strip them out. 12 points, super easy to strip. Now if you do not have an impact, you are able to stick a screw, screwdriver through the uh, where the clutch bolts through. And as you're using a breaker bar or whatever, you will rotate this over. The screwdriver will bottom out against your uh, block here. And then you'll be able to loosen these off as well. So this is good timing also. If you uh, are ripping all this off, it's not a bad time to do the rear main seal and or the oil pan seal. We just did this because it's a rebuilt engine. So, obviously if you're doing a clutch, you, don't, you do not have to take the flywheel off. You can keep it on there. If you are replacing the clutch, I would recommend resurfacing this, however, which would require you taking it off, so. All right guys, so we got our new ones over here. We got our old setup over here. The obvious differences here between the flywheels are is the new one has all these holes machined into it. That's gonna be partially how it's so light. It's also going to be a lot stronger as it's SFI certified. The only thing you need to do is put in a new pilot bushing. So, that's the biggest difference between flywheels. You need to make sure that you do clean this really well with brake clean before you put the clutch onto it. Same thing goes for the pressure plate as well. Next biggest difference, other than this one is 
beyond worn out and down to the rivets is you can see this is one solid disc whereas this is a six puck and this is going to provide a stronger clamping force as well as the stronger fingers here so you're going to get much better clamping out of this that's how you get that high performance i think it's rated for 350 horsepower so these two paired together you're going to have a quicker response here with the light and flywheel and much better clamping with the clutch kit so i got some cleaning i gotta get some bushings we can start reassembling we should be good to go so we got our new flywheel here as well as our new bearing you're gonna take a small amount of grease on the outer race here doesn't have to be much and then from the rear of the flywheel we're gonna start hammering this bearing in you can use a socket on the race you can use a flat piece of wood you can use a bearing installer either of them will work you just want to make sure that it is going in nice and square you don't want it on an angle start seeing it's working well you can see there is a groove here so it will only go in so far so you want to make sure that it is nice and flush in there it will st stick out of the back just a little bit but that's not an issue so that's how you install this bearing so when you're installing this flywheel you do not have to worry about a certain alignment uh, these do have a neutral balance so you are good to go it is starting to rain my camera's about to die so I'm gonna try and do this as quick as possible so we had a bit of an accident that is way too much Loctite, but we're going to run with it. Now you want to spin these in all the way by hand. You do not want to use an impact or anything, maybe a breaker bar ratchet, nothing too crazy. Get our screwdriver, stick it through. And as you can see, the screwdriver will stop it from turning. Make sure we're sitting flush. And 76. All right, so we gave everything one more clean. That includes our pressure plate as well as our flywheel. Put our clutch alignment tool into our clutch. We do not need to grease it up at this point. Slide into the pilot bearing. And do not trust this, it will fall out. We're going to take our pressure plate, slip it over top. And then we're going to start threading these bolts in crisscross opposites. There are six in total, and we're just going to go almost snug, but not quite snug yet. Now, once we have our disc free floating and everything's almost snug, and then just slightly, just slightly push up on it, then we're going to snug one of these down. Doesn't have to be not much for it to be stiff. And then once we get too snug, get our torque wrench. We're going to set it to 19 foot pounds. Not a bad idea to do it in stages. Not just tighten it right down right away. Once they're all torqued, just go over them again just to make sure that they're all snug still. Take our clutch alignment tool and we can see it easily slides in and out. So we're golden. Our next step, we're just going to go over and we're going to swap out that release bearing and then uh, we're getting ready to throw the trans back on. All right, one of the last steps here for this clutch kit, we're just going to need some grease. So we're going to pop this boot off. Pull the fork out, release bearing off. You can see this one is pretty much brand new. Obviously clean it all off, clean off the splines here. Just throw a little bit of grease here on the two uh, forks. Only other place to throw some grease is gonna be right here on the input shaft itself on the splines and then onto the smooth section. So to put your new throw bearing in, take our release bearing, slip it down, and you wanna make sure that the Spring retainer here hooks onto this ball pivot. Easy as that. So obviously grease will make this a lot easier. This is pretty much perfect. So now we are good to throw the transmission onto the car. If you want to make sure that you have both dowels, in my case, one is in the transmission, one stayed in the block. Those are very important. So you gotta make sure that you do have those dowels still in their locations. And at this point, you could use a jack, lift it up and plop it into place. I've done this so many times, I'm just gonna lift it up myself and I'll be able to slam it in there. Now, you don't wanna hang it off the input shaft, same as removing it. You wanna kinda of support the tail end. And uh, once you get it on there, you can snug up a bolt and that'll hold it. And at that point, you can bring a, bring a jack under, lift it up and you should be good to go. Honestly, super easy to do. Not a bad idea to have a helping hand or use a jack, but like I said, I've done this so many times, 
I'm just gonna slam it into place. All right guys, so we've now got the transmission in the car. I'm just gonna line up this T-bracket now. I'm gonna put this axle in, then I'm gonna fill up the transmission now while we have the most room. At this point, I have the transmission supported by the jack. And I'm gonna use the jack by lifting the transmission That's going to line up this T-bracket for us. And once we get that lined up, I'm going to do up those two bolts. At this point, honestly, it's just the uh, reverse of this assembly. Uh, if I have any tips or tricks, I will film them. But other than this, it's pretty straightforward. I like to put the starter in first, and then I'll put on this uh, trans mount and uh, get everything bolted up. Get the engine and trans bolted to the chassis completely and torqued together. And then I'll start throwing everything together like the hubs, spindles, axles, all the goodies, start doing fluids and then doing the wiring. So pretty straightforward, hard parts over. All right, so next up we're gonna be filling the trans. You can see right there, it's gonna be the trans fill hole right next to the axle. You wanna make sure you have both axles in fully seated. And you take your nice funnel and hose setup, string it down there, and that's how you're gonna fill this up. You can go from the wheel well and use a little pumper bottle, or sometimes you are able to get a flexible funnel into there, but that's what I find easiest. And this takes, I believe, about four quarts, so I'm gonna go ahead and top it up now, and you'll know it's full when it starts coming out of that fill hole. Again, has to be level in order to get the correct amount in there. All right, so once you've dumped about six liters of oil on the ground and covered your uh, brand new electric impact in it, we use the jack to level out the engine to get this trans mount on. I bolted it to the transmission first, but I kept it loose, and then that way I'm able to use the jack to line up all these holes, and I still have the free play in it. So we'll go ahead and get those tightened up. So we're just putting the shift linkage on. I'd say to grease this bushing up just to help slide the uh, support rod on. And then for the actual linkage pin itself, you can start it, hammer it into this collar first, before you slide it into the actual shift lever. Throw it up into place, and then you might have to hold the rod down here and pull it towards the front of the vehicle to help keep this hole aligned. Give it a couple taps with your hammer and it pops right in. You honestly don't even need grease or anything. Once we hammer this flush, we're gonna go ahead, slap this collar back on, pull the boot over, make sure everything's nice, covered, and sealed. Then we're done down here. We can start throwing the uh, wheels on and we're damn near done. And when we're doing this spindle nut, this gets torqued very high so you basically have to tighten this the same way that you had to break it loose, whether it's your impact with a torque wrench or throw the wheels on, drop it down, something like that. And you want to make sure that when you put the axle through the hub bearing here, you want to clean it off and use some fresh grease in there. And then when you put your axle nut on, on the axle with the uh, threads, you want to hammer it in here with a punch. That's going to be a secondary lock on it, so uh, we're getting pretty close. Just got to throw the brakes on, and if you do have a hard time lining up the strut, I know the factory ones are a little bit longer, they can be a pain. Uh, throwing a jack underneath on one of the forks or your control arms depends on how you assemble this. Uh, you can use the jack to lift it into place, slide your bolt through, and you're good to go. So we're getting really close. I just have the brakes to put on, tighten up a few bolts. Then it's a good idea to go over everything, make sure you didn't miss any bolts. Make sure everything's nice and tight, go in. Move the shifter, make sure it's moving freely. Then we can hop up top, do up our wiring. Make sure you get your speed sensor, starter, and your reverse light plug all put together. Then we can throw on your intake tube, connect the battery, fire it up, and see if it moves under its own power. Oh, it's like 40 degrees inside of here. Woo. All right, so we got everything on. Uh, it's time for a test drive. Make sure all your bolts are tight and you have no leaks out of the transmission because we did take the brakes off. You need to pump those brakes first. If you hop in and try and drive, you're not gonna have brakes for the first few pumps. That's how you crash a car. So pump those brakes till they're stiff so you know you have brakes. We're gonna crawl underneath, make sure we have no uh, leaks coming out of the transmission. And boys, you just did a clutch job, so good job. This is a big job to do. It's not super difficult. You do need a couple tools and it's just, it's time consuming, especially for your first time, but uh, honestly, anyone can do it in your driveway. You can do it alone. Helping hand works works wonders, but uh, like I showed you guys, not impossible. And uh, already it seems like it's very responsive with that light flywheel. 
Uh, I think it's like eight pounds lighter and that's, it fires up so much quicker. It's, it's crazy actually. So after you guys go for uh, a couple drives, uh, it's not a bad idea to put back up on some ramps, double check all your bolts, make sure everything's looking happy. And you have to follow the break-in procedure, which is very boring, but super important. So uh, with the new clutch, especially this stage three clutch, you want to take it easy for the first 500 kilometers or miles. Take it easy for a bit and uh, you want to keep it at a varying RPM. Uh, you want to avoid sitting at a consistent speed so you don't want to do any highway driving if possible, uh, especially for the first couple days. Just pot around town, uh, go for a couple test drives, try and get used to that new clutch because she bites pretty hard. Takes a bit to get used to but that thing is a beast and I've done a couple launches on it. It holds real good so that's how you guys do a clutch. This is a lot of information to throw at you but uh, pretty straightforward hopefully this helps you guys out so far would I recommend this clutch over the couple months I've had it absolutely the flywheel flywheel is not a bad idea you have to machine your old one anyway so you might as well upgrade and so far the throttle response is crazy so hope this helps guys enjoy your new clutch and flywheel and take care